Happy Tuesday morning, everyone. It is Tuesday, December 1st, 2020. EV. And why am I showing you this tetrahedron? Well, first of all, it's really cool. Not only that, but it's a box. It's a stained glass uh, beautiful thing given to me by our good friend in the OTO, Sel Heidel, many, many, many years ago. And it has a little something to do with uh, our subject today because we're talking about the two, three, and four of discs in the Thoth Tarot. And as we all know, as I keep reminding us, the twos, threes, fours are the cardinal signs of the zodiac, and, uh, and uh, discs are earth, and cardinal earth is right Capricorn. And the three planets uh, assigned to it coming down the tree of life from uh, Jupiter, Mars, and then right, the sun. Okay. All right, we're learning. Anyway, Constance is out shopping on her bicycle this morning. That way I can leave the door open and I can be profane and use the F word if I want. But I probably won't. Let's start with the two of discs. Now this is one of the most beautiful cards in the deck and uh, many people I know have a enlargement of this framed over their fireplace. Look at that. He's got a crown on his head and there's our Jupiter in Capricorn. And it's called Change. Two of discs change. Jupiter and Capricorn, 10 degrees, uh, excuse me, 0 degrees to 10 degrees Capricorn. December 22nd to December 30th. The original title is Lord of Harmonious Change. The Golden Dawn model. In the center, a green and gold serpent with its tail in its mouth forms a figure eight. A hand appears from the clouds on the left side of the card and grasps the serpent where the two loops intersect. Within each loop is a disc similar to that of the ace. There are no roses in this card. Now we're into the princess scale of color. The princess scale uh, is attributed to the final hey in yod hey vav hey the uh, asiya the world the material world and the nepish the uh, animal soul part of uh, kabbalistic part of the soul so we'll use the princess scale of color the princess scale of color for hokma which is two White flecked red, blue and yellow. The four scales for Jupiter are violet, blue, rich purple, bright blue, red, yellow. Four scales for Capricorn are indigo, black, blue black, cold dark gray, nearing black. She did a pretty good job with those colors actually. The formula that makes change change is two hokma of discs asaya plus Jupiter in Capricorn equals change. Even though Jupiter and Capricorn are not usually happy with each other, this high on the tree of life, their differences are more or less forgotten. Crowley calls this card, quote, the picture of complete of the complete manifested universe 
in respect of its dynamics. I'll repeat that. The picture of the complete manifested universe in respect of its dynamics. Like the twos of the other suits, this card, not the ace, represents the first manifestation of the element. Discs being earth, and as we recall, earth being the throne of spirit, we have in a very real sense completed a great cosmic circuit. Quoting Crowley, having got to the bottom, one immediately comes out again at the top. Hence the card manifests the symbolism of the serpent of the endless band. Unquote. Crowley sings in his uh, Lieber 65, Then I beheld myself compassed about with the infinite circle of emerald that encloseth the universe. As if to suggest the nuclei of the first dividing cells of what will soon be the material universe, two yin-yangs whirl in the center of the two coils of the serpent. The top rotates to the left and contains within itself the symbols of fire and water. The, uh, the bottom rotates to the right and contains within itself the symbols of air and earth. Harris tells Crowley that she paid particular attention to the colors. Quote, Number two discs is on the stalks. Is the serpent's eye to be red? It is a bit awkward, as there are several colors introduced in the card which do not belong to Jupiter and Capricorn. I mean the four elements colors, and they make an inhar and they make inharmonious patches. Did you say anything about jewels on the serpent? I think you will like him. And the patch inharmonious patches she's talking about are those little elemental symbols and colors in the middle of the yin yang there. It still looks pretty good. See chapter 20 for the general divinatory meanings of this card. Okay, the three of discs. And as you can imagine, we're going to be talking about that tetragrammat or that uh, tetrahedron. The three of discs works. Mars in Capricorn. 10 to 20 degrees Capricorn. December 31st to January 9th. The original title, Lord of the Material Works. Lord of Material Works. Golden Dawn model, from the clouds at the bottom of the card, a hand appears holding a branch of a rose tree. Three discs are arranged as an upright equilateral triangle. Crowning the top discs are two white rosebuds. The lower discs appear right and left at the tips of the green leaves. The princess scale for Bina, or number three, is gray flecked pink. Four scales for Mars, scarlet, red, Venetian red, bright red rayed azure or emerald. Four scales for Capricorn, indigo, black, blue black, cold dark gray, nearing black. The formula that makes work work is three bina of discs asaya plus mars and capricorn equals work now 
although in the Book of Thoth, Crowley consistently recur refers to this card as work. The title that appears on Lady Harris's painting, and consequently the published editions of the Thoth Tarot, is works. In either case, the factors that determine its character, Bina of Osaya, Mars in Capricorn, make this card among all the abstract supernal triad small cards the most unabstract. In a very real way, the Three of Discs is the material heart of the three-stroke engine that drives the universe that we discussed in Atu uh, 10, the Wheel of Fortune. Crowley says, quote, it is the material establishment of the idea of the universe, the determination of its basic form." Unquote. The image is an aerial view of a pyramid or tetrahedron. Now, we know why Crowley called it the manifestation uh, of the universe in its material form because just a triangle is a flat surface like, the sh like a sheet of paper. It's a flat surface like that. One two and three points of a triangle. One, two, three, okay, aren't a manifested material yet. It hasn't broken into the world of matter. That's why the, across the abyss, matter and dimension as we know it no longer exists. It's only when a fourth point is created, does a universe pop up into material existence as we see it? So that's why Crowley is hinting that that popping is going to start, is going to soon take place. And the base for that popping, the base for four is prepared in three. How's that for confusion? The image is an aerial view of a pyramid or tetrahedron firmly fixed on a desolate desert representing the great sea of Bina. So those, those are sand dunes. Those are desert sand dunes. And it looks like that tetrahedron has just plopped down explosively onto the desert floor. The gray sand dunes seem to have been formed by blasts of energy emanating from the structure, which itself is supported by three great wheels. Although they are very small and difficult to see, the symbols of the alchemical elements, mercury, sulfur, and salt, appear in the hubs of the three wheels, suggesting the eternal universal sustaining competition of the three gunas of the Hindu system. And we talked about those in the Wheel of Fortune card. So I don't know if you can see it, but in the hub of that wheel is Mercury. And in the hub of that wheel is salt. And in the hub of that wheel is sulfur. Just like the three emblems of those elements on the Wheel of, Fort uh, wheel of Fortune card. See chapter 20 for the general divinatory meaning of this card. Okay, 
finally this morning. The four of discs, power. Sol and Capricorn, 20 to 30 degrees Capricorn. January 10th through January tw uh, 19th. The original title is Lord of Earthly Power. The Golden Dawn model, from clouds at the bottom of the card, a hand appears, holding a branch of a rose tree. There are no flowers or buds other than one white rose in the center in full bloom. Discs are arranged as if on the point of a square. Now these are discs, but they're square discs. And they're like the watchtowers of Castle. And we've got the elements represented. There's earth. There's air. There's water. And there's fire. The princess scale for Hesed is deep azure flecked yellow. Hesed being number four. The four scales of uh, color for Saul are orange, gold yellow, rich amber, amber rayed red. The four scales for Capricorn are indigo, black, blue black, cold dark gray, nearing black. The formula that makes power power is four Hesed of discs, Asaya, and Sol in Capricorn equal power. This card is well named. It is Sol in Capricorn, and to the ancients, the greatest display of celestial power occurred each year when the sun entered Capricorn and conquered death by reversing its southward plunge into darkness. In the Book of Thoth, Crowley describes how, quote, Hesed shows the establishment of the universe in three dimensions. Yeah, I was just trying to lift up my tetrahedron there. Ah, a lot of lead in there. Let's see. Uh... uh Hesed shows the establishment of the universe in three dimensions, that is, below the abyss. In the rite of Saturn, he calls it, quote, the fortress that is upon the frontier of the abyss. That's what he calls Hesed, number four on the tree of life. The fortress on the frontier of the abyss. This is a perfectly described perfect description of the Four of Discs. To properly view this card, we must imagine ourselves hovering hundreds of feet above a four-square walled citadel surrounded by a moat. We are approaching from the bottom of the card and are not yet above dead center. Four tall watchtowers crowned with battlements displaying the symbols of the elements rise from the corners and, and tower far above the walls. The main entrance to the fortress is seen at the bottom of the card. Now I'm going to read the description in a moment, but I just want you to see that. Imagine you're coming clip clap clip clap clip clap up the road through the gate through the gate uh, over the moat through the other gate into the courtyard okay 
There's no other entrances that we can see, but wait a second. There's a road too leading in, but we don't see it actually penetrating the courtyard. And over here, we see another road. But it too doesn't penetrate the courtyard. Now, how do we know that there's probably a door there nonetheless? Is because in the one that we can see from our angle, we can actually see the sunlight shining through that opening. Now that suggests that in order to actually get in from one of these other roads, you're going to have to figure out how to cross that moat yourself. Okay. Uh, The main entrance of the fortress is seen at the bottom of the card. A fortified bridge crosses the moat. From this angle, we can only see one other entrance, that tiny opening that does not lead to a bridge in the opposite wall. Similar openings may exist in the walls on the right and left. From our aerial position, it is impossible to tell. However, we are tantalized but what appears to be roads leading up to the moat from the three other quarters, possibly an indication of other openings. The imagery of this card certainly leaves us with many mysteries unsolved. And then we'll leave that mystery unsolved at the end of today's talk. See chapter 20 for general divinatory meanings of this card. Okay, tomorrow we will pick up with the five, six, and seven of discs as we continue uh, finishing up the Understanding Aleister Crowley's Thoth Tarot. So I hope you have a wonderful month ahead of us here. Let's try to make it a, a good one. It will certainly be uh, memorable in a f very forgettable way. <laughs> Continue to be good to yourself and be good to each other. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law. Love under will.